This is Home Buying Basics, where we attempt to simplify the mortgage process of buying a home. I'm Zoe Zabuki with Ed's Home Finance, and today we're going to talk about how you can save money on your mortgage, even with a high interest rate. You heard me right. With a high interest rate, you can save money, and I'm going to show you how in this video. So let's get into it. Okay, I think everyone's aware, rates are rising. They've been rising pretty rapidly all year. We've had the feds announce multiple times that they're gonna rise rates to try to slow down inflation or anticipate more increases in the rates. And the big question that I get from a lot of clients is how do I navigate this? How do I save money with these rates going up? I still wanna buy, I still think it makes sense to buy, but these rates are going up. What do I do about it? Well. In this video, we're gonna go over a quick strategy of how you can take advantage of what's called lender credits. And lender credits is what will actually give you money back at closing. And the game plan here, the strategy here, is that you're gonna refinance later and get out of the higher rate that you would get with lender credits to basically get back into a more comfortable payment and a more preferred interest rate. So I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work. For full disclosure, what we're going over today is based off of a scenario that is priced out on today's rate with UWM. So rates are so volatile that they're possible, it's possibly changing uh, within the day. They're subject to change daily, they're subject to change within the day. And so I just wanna give full disclosure that the rates that I'm gonna post here are UWM's pricing for a 740 plus credit score of 595 purchase price in Denver, Colorado with 5% down. So I'm gonna post the rates right here. So let me explain what we're looking at here. The numbers in red are buy down costs for those rates. The lower you go on a rate, the lower uh, your rate is, the more the cost is gonna be for that rate. And I'm not showing you everything on this list, I'm just giving you a quick sample size, but this is Again, going off of UWM's pricing for a $595,000 purchase with 5% down. These are the rate options, okay? So when you go up higher in rate, you get what's called a lender credit. Those are the numbers in green. And those numbers can be used to cover your closing costs. They can't cover down payment, but they can cover closing costs. And in a lot of scenarios, you have closing costs anywhere from $6,500 all the way up to over $10,000, depending on what taxes, insurance, different closing costs may entail. So in this example, we're going to look at the comparison between a par rate, which is no cost, no credit. That's the 4.707 versus a 5.125 that gives you a lender credit of $5,366 rounded up. All right. So let's jump into the scenario and see how this strategy works. Before we do our interest rate comparison, I want to show you guys the interest rate chart. This is what mortgage interest rates ultimately mirror is the treasury yield 10 year. You can watch this on yahoo.finance.com. Just type in TNX and you can watch this for yourself. But I'm showing you the last five years just to give you an idea of how rates move. And these bars, these white and gray bars, ultimately show you the movement every six months. This is representing every six months of movement within these bars. And I just want to show you that rates are basically going to come down. At some point, they're going to come down based on what history shows us. Now, I can't guarantee anything, can't promise anything, but we can always look at history to kind of give us an idea of what the future might do with these kinds of things. So I just want to show you here, in September of 2017, we have a low, and then we go up to, within a year, we have a new high in 2018, September 2018, right? September, October-ish, okay? And then we come all the way down a year later, we have a new low. So within two years from September of 2017 to September of 2019, you have two solid lows where a lot of people are refinancing. Now, don't get me wrong, people are refinancing every year, all the time. Just depends on your particular situation. But in a scenario where you're buying high, like in here in 2018, and you still have your home a year later, it makes sense to refinance because rates are lower, right? And you can take advantage of those low rates. So when you're buying at a high interest rate point, 
it makes sense to buy in a way where you're thinking through the process of the fact that you're actually gonna get rid of that loan. You're gonna be out of that loan potentially within two years. And so you might as well take advantage of whatever that loan can give you as far as the cash that you can pocket. Uh, thus, the strategy I'm showing you here. Uh, again, in 2017, 2019, we have um, two opportunities to refinance. And if we come back to September 2019, we're dropping again, right? Obviously, COVID has a big impact on this, but 2020 gives us historical lows. And then we come back up in 2021. In March of 2021, we have a new high, but then we go back down in 2021. So again, within a few months, we have a new low and another opportunity for people to refinance. So here's where we are now. We're at a high uh, for the last three years, but ultimately, um, if this continues to go higher, we know that at some point, rates will come back down based on the history of what rates have done. And that gives us some confidence that there'll be refinance opportunities in the near future. So, now, as we look at our interest rate option comparisons with the mindset that we might have the opportunity to refinance is a good, strong indication that we will have the opportunity to refinance based on what history has shown us for interest rate movement. We're possibly going to be able to refinance within two years, maybe three years at the most. Right. But in the examples I just showed you, there's sometimes opportunities of refinance within a year, within a year and a half. Whatever the case is, we know that there's a refi coming soon and likely within three years. So I want to show you how it makes sense to go with the higher interest rate and lender credit option if you are planning on refinancing within the next three years. So if you look at the 4.707 par rate option, again, par rate means there's no cost, there's no credit associated with that rate. Our principal and interest payment is $29.33.98. We don't get any lender credits, so our total closing costs and down payment combination cash to close is going to be $37,250 versus the scenario where we actually take the higher rate that gives us a lender credit. Yes, it's going to push our payment up $143.73 more to be exact, but we get a lender credit of $5,366 rounded up and our total estimated cash to close is lowered by that much, right? So now we have a savings at closing of $5,365.96. And the difference in payment is more, but if we're planning on refinancing within three years, in this example, our actual months to break even is a little over three years, it's 37 months. And we can ultimately plan to refinance within that time frame to take advantage of the money that we got at closing. So if you're gonna refinance within that time frame of 37 months, why not take advantage of the lender credits and overall be a winner with the amount of money that you have in pocket when you consider the time that you're gonna be in the loan. So I hope that was helpful and all made sense. If you had any other questions that you wanna kinda of cover with this particular scenario, feel free to reach out. You can always comment below and hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, take care and God bless. Thanks for watching. If you found any of the content helpful, please subscribe, hit the notifications icon so that you can be informed of the next video upload. And if you're a borrower looking for a home loan, purchase or refinance, I'd love the opportunity to work with you. Please give me a call or start the process at applywithzo.com.